हेलो एंड वेलकम टू ऑटो कार प्रोफेशनल वी आर ह्योर एट द फ्यूचर पावर ट्रेन कॉन्क्लेव इन चेन्नई एंड आई एम डिलाइटेड टू बी स्टैंडिंग विद एंड ह्योर वी गोइंग टू बी डिस्कसिंग विद मिस्टर हजेला अबाउट हाउ द फ्यूचर ऑफ इंडस्ट्री एंड हाउ डिफरेंट एंड प्लूरल पावर ट्रेन आर गोइंग टू पावर द इंडिया ऑफ टूमोरो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस सर थैंक यू प्रेरणा can you talk about the strategy you've mentioned time and again that how india is going to see a multiplicity of power trains how will that sort of uh, translate into real world conditions what how do you what do you think india needs to achieve its net zero target uh, ultimately i think uh, it's going to be a, a choice of customer and choice of customer depends on the choice uh, the cost of uh, each of the options which we are going to give so important is that uh, what's the value proposition which we are offering to customer so that it he becomes a natural choice coming to uh, the ev or clean energy i would say clean energy solution and that's where we need to uh, have lot of work in front of us apart from government uh, as an engineer we need to work on high de density uh, high energy density battery low cost low weight because these are the things which will change the cons consumer way to adopt uh, to any of these and then important is in india is resale value yeah. because uh, government policy which currently says that it is 8 years and what do we do after 8 years there are multiple option which will be created that we can use the battery for a storage solution for energy solution which are stationary so these are the kind of things which are going to define the future of ev adoption in india but we are going to live with uh, all the energy for long and that's what we are prepared for but important is that we need to keep in mind that we leave the world uh, in a cleaner environment what we took over that's a very good point that pluralistic technology is what is going to define the future uh, you spoke about uh, resale value becoming a road road block what do you think is the other road block <laughs> like some other challenges that you see for india in terms of uh, uh, you know looking at the net zero targets because we've seen the pace of electrification has slowed so what are the other challenges that you see are sort of solvable by sort of policy changes or corporate uh, you know stepping up so i think three and we discussed in the conclave and this is one of one of the beauty of this conclave is to bring everybody together with different perspective and look at it i think it's a consistent taxation for the long term view in the mind uh, con consistent uh, i would say incentivization of uh, ev which is there obviously working on three factors which is charging infra the cost and technology uh, adoption of the new uh, new power train to reduce the cost and us upskilling the labor force which is there because whatever we say we are going to deal with every of this technology i would guess till 2060 because even if we take a task that by 2045 we will be 100% carbon neutral which i assume it would be ev but then the last gas engine would be there in the in the market for next 15 years so we need to start thinking about it how do we scale up how do we scale down and work on both things parallel got it and this you mean uh, in india or globally because india is sort of expected to lead uh, like be be the last person standing when it comes to other technologies as well so globally every country will have the choice to make whether they wanted to do it faster or they want to go like the way india will go knowing india we are very cost conscious we are a developing economy so i would say this is for india any other country may have faster adoption like china may have faster adoption uh, or continuity in a different manner based on their own policies when you look at ev demand globally as well as in india what do you uh, what is your sense because the pace of adoption seems to be slowing so uh, obviously pluralistic technology is like a solution and seems to be the future but when you look at the market today how do you see it developing towards like ev market developing and growing or do you see that that pace has sort of you know there needs to be some recalibration from the automaker side as well i would say this is a typical development or adoption cycle where initially you see the early adopter you see the early people coming in to experiment to experience and they are the first one and then it it goes down and try to take adjustment towards a sustainable one 
So whatever is happening, I would say this is in, in a view of getting into a sustained manner, which is in cost, weight, policies, all together it has to come to continue to take us to a way where it can be sustained with 20-25% and keep growing every year on year. Got it. Coming to Stellantis and how it's looking at its India operations, it's sort of rejigged its strategy and it's, you know, back in full force and you have a lot of strategy to sort of look at deeper penetration in the Indian market. If you could just delve into that strategy going forward in the next five years, how do we see the brand developing in India and the kind of penetration that you expect? No, I would say uh, we started with our brand Jeep in India, which is very well known. Uh, we have the Citron brand, which is a young brand. Uh, we have 14, 15 brands globally. Uh, soon there will be one, few more will be added. And ne next five years, India continue to be our core operations, not only for India and Asia-Pacific region, but for the world, because we wanted to take the best of India, which is uh, serving Indian customer domestically, serving region, which is India and Asia-Pacific, serving the world with technology which is a component export, engine export, transmission, software, everything. And this is the multi-play which we are going to continue to focus in India. Yeah. So multi-brand play and how it will see each brand developing into, into its core audience. That's if you could also talk about your core audience developing into, like because Indian customer is becoming more demanding, they're getting, you're getting a lot of younger customers into your fold. So if you could look at your main brands and define your core audience, for our uh, you know viewers it will be great so I think Jeep is uh, for the passionate one who wants to go anywhere do anything uh, that's the Jeep motto so we would like to continue to appeal those kind of customer on Citron uh, we would like to have young ones and the ones who can afford and they like the car as a driving uh, machine that's where we want to do and more brands which will come we will have continue to exploit the brand value and provide those to Indian customers. All right, thank you so much. That's a great strategy and I think it, it's, it makes sense to sort of have a different audience for different brands that you already have uh, in the country. Thank you so much and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, Prerna.